see. Thank you, Josh, that was brilliant. Um, so uh, we're going to invite a, a couple of familiar faces forward and some unfamiliar uh, who are going to be sharing with us uh, this morning. Uh, I also realised that I'd forgotten to do something. I forgot to announce about giving. Uh, so if you're a guest or visitor with us this morning, don't feel at all obligated to give. It's just how we who go here regularly uh, contribute uh, to God's work. So if you view this as your church, uh, we have some giving forms at the back if you want to give that way. And also there's a wee basket at the back and there's this QR code. But I'm going to invite John, Karen, Ruth and Hannah forward. Brilliant. So this Sunday is a little different to normal. So normally you have to, to listen to me for about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, but we're taking a break from our Sermon in the Mount series. Um, so the last number of months, we have been gathering in this place on Tuesday nights over great food, some great videos, uh, and great discussion for Alpha. Uh, you'll see the banner at the front every week here in church. We love Alpha in this church. What is Alpha? Well, it's a course for anyone who wants to explore life, faith, and meaning. Uh, and in the course, uh, we invite people who are maybe new to faith or exploring faith uh, to learn more about Jesus. So we've been meeting every Tuesday night for Alpha, uh, and the final session is on church. So we thought that it would be good to do the final session on church, in church. Uh, so we're going to start with a wee interview here to find out from some of the team what their experience of the local church has uh, been. So I've got some questions for you guys, and I'll pass the mic around if it stretches. Hopefully it stretches, okay? We'll do some kind of dance. We'll yeah, we'll do some kind of dance. Okay. Um, so John, uh, for you, church is more than a building or a meeting for one hour on a Sunday. Could you describe what being part of the local church means to you? Yeah, sure. So church, and I just, I love, I love this church here. And church to me is, is, it's community. It's my community. It's, it's, it's more than that. It's family. Um, uh, and, and it's, uh, uh, you know, family insofar as everybody just cares for each other and, and loves each other. And, you know, the Bible says that's how we stand out compared to others, by the love that we have for each other. And, and people here genuinely do care and, and, and love. Um, yeah, and and uh, I couldn't do without you, to be honest with you, because um, there's so many people here, you know, who've encouraged me, who have prayed for me, um, whenever I haven't been feeling good. Uh, I've been through a wee spell of ill health a few months ago. People prayed with me and, and just shared their love with me. It meant, it meant so much to me. And um, I think the, the last thing it means to me is it's, it's, it's more than that. It's more than family. It's more than community. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's lots of communities out there in the world. Um, years ago, I was in a football supporters club. That's a kind of community, you know, where everybody get on well with each other and, and people liked each other and, you know, but this is more than that. This is actually um, God's family and what a privilege. Um, as well as being a community, we actually have one thing in common. We come here every week to meet with Jesus and and uh, and to worship Him. Thank you very much, John. So, Karen, a huge part of church. We're almost in order here. It's great. We did that. I did, uh, um, so, a huge part of uh, church, Karen, is being equipped and helped to grow in your faith. And so, how has the local church helped you to do that uh, in your relationship with Jesus over the years? I'm one of the more unfamiliar faces, I think, guys from Liverpool. Um, I think there's, a, I'll keep it brief, but there's a few different ways. So I think this is really important. So Sunday morning, um, getting good teaching, uh, and coming along week together as a group. I also think sort of the midweek, those Bible studies, getting together as a, a group of believers, I think that's really important as well. Um, just to build those connections amongst us as a, as a body of believers and to um, to really look at God's word and sort of see what that has to say for our lives. Um, and then just like you were saying earlier, in terms of service, and I think really about Jesus and God's really called us to, to go out into our communities and to love those around us. And I think, so I think those three things are really important. So being here on a Sunday, getting good teaching, um, midweek, um, your Bible study, and then taking that out if you want. 
Thank you, Anna. Uh, I'll move on with Anna here, actually. Um, so, Anna, a huge part of being in the local church is serving others. Um, so how do you serve in your local setting or your church? Um, <laughs> I can always hold it too far away, yeah. like, uncomfortably close, I think. Yeah, so I just think, it was one of the things we discussed on Alpha, um, just like, obviously there's really big ways that God can use us, um, and sometimes it's just a smaller thing, he uses our own personalities, so um, whether it's, um, he calls some into teaching, if he calls some just into, like, I think for me, I really, I just love like welcoming people, so... And I also love baking, so I think a lot of people have probably benefited from a wee bit of hospitality. Um, but yeah, I just think it's really important that um, like whatever your passion is or just whatever talents you have or time, it's really like God will use that. Um, I think somebody said to me that um, it's like three P's, so um, your time, your treasure, and your talent. So treasure is like your money you can give to the local church to do the to help God's kingdom, but you can also give your time, whether it's um, like for me in the Willowfield, I, I have a passion for kids, so I will get involved in a lot of the children's work there, um, but, and yeah, so I think the three things, T, time, treasure and talent, is a really easy way to remember like how you can advance God's kingdom. So. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got another mic here, brilliant. Uh, so Ruth, what would you say to, say, say to someone who's new to faith, they're young in their faith, um, and they're thinking of starting to go along to church? What sort of things would you recommend for new Christians to get involved in, to grow in their faith? Um, I would say, if you're a new Christian, um, you know, you're not supposed to do life alone. You know, God faces us with families. And I would say, find a church where you feel welcomed and loved and somewhere where you can journey with other people because you know just because you become a Christian doesn't mean that say everything's going to be easy and you'll need support you'll need people to draw alongside you you'll need people to pray with you and just be there for you so um, find a church where you feel it's the right fit for you and whenever you get to that church you get involved go to home group serve, you know, even if it's only welcoming somebody at the door, looking by the chairs, you know, get involved, do something and um, you'll feel more part of it then as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Going back to John now, um, so the church has been described as the only organisation on earth that exists not for the benefit of the members, but the, for the benefit of the world outside. So how have you seen the local church benefit communities and the world outside of these four walls? So, um, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, you know, I've seen it in so many ways down the years, but if you're talking about here in Tully Carmen, you know, where we've, we've um, you know, at Easter time, we, where we, we had a stall with the, we joined with the community, with their, their community festival and, at Easter, and, and just mixing with the community and, and um, blessing people there. Um, through uh, you know the you, you know here this week even as an example we had we had thirty six men in here who who not from an ideal background and all with vulnerabilities and, and, and issues and from their past maybe and present and able we were able to bring those guys here and and just share God's love with those people and give them a good meal and um, you know and. Uh, and bless them and it's it's i've seen it so many ways locally here now and even my friend rose i have a friend rose who i did youth work with uh and she lives in saint field and she has gone and lived in guatemala for the last number of years and she's blessing people in guatemala and um you know the things she's able to help people right through the pandemic because you can imagine here we had injections and we had hospitals and, and, and doctors whereas uh, where she lives in Guatemala, um, they have none of that, and yet she was able to share God's love for people and, and do what she could for them, and um, and so I've seen it locally, and I've seen it internationally, uh, and there's just so many 
take the work of Tearfall as well as another Christian organization. Uh, and, and Jesus has really given us this purpose in life that you know, we, we have, we know, we have the good news to share with others. Uh, and when, once you, you have something in your life that, like Jesus, and, and it, uh, you just want to share with others uh, about his love. So it's definitely not for the four walls, it's for everybody. Yeah. So Hannah, um, how has the local church supported you in difficult times or in times of doubt in your life? Yes, that's a big question. Um, but definitely, um, like whenever I was in my early 20s, I was in that place of doubt. I was really doubting, like, um, just, I wasn't seeing God move in my life in the way I kind of expected him, or what I wanted him to. Um, I think that's a really key lesson to learn. Um, and yeah, so whenever I was like doubting, I'm like, do I really have faith? Um, like at a time where a lot of my friends that I've grown up with have kind of lost their faith. Um, I, well, there was a friend um, who just started to be persistent and inviting me to church, and to Willoughby Church, and um, yeah, I just think, I just encountered God there, and like obviously when we talk about the church, we talk about it's the people um, that we get, and yeah, I just think it's really interesting how God like, um, just brought other people in my life, other Christians, you know, to, they just inspired me in faith. Um, People were talking about how Jesus was real and active in their life, and I just they really needed to hear that. Um, so that was really quite pivotal. Um, yeah, I think that just really helped me to keep my faith at a time where I was really struggling. Thanks, thanks for that, Hannah. That's brilliant. And finally, Ruth, do you believe that it's important to be in worship each week, and what benefit has that had on your life and your relationship with God? God's word spoken, it's like um, a really good um, start to the week. Um, just taking an hour or two out just to focus on, on God and what he's done for us. And, um, when, I, when I miss church, you know, I really, I really do miss it, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe COVID allowed that and we were missing for a couple of weeks and I just couldn't wait to get back to church. So I just feel that, you know, just filling up each week with God's spirit and starting the week off well. Absolutely, absolutely. Shall we give these guys a round of applause? These guys have been helping and helping the class throughout the week. So I'm going to briefly share in 15 minutes. So normally I speak for a lot longer. Um, so yeah, some of you are silent. Uh, you're, you're relieved. Um, I'm going to try and talk about um, about the church here and, and give you, paint a beautiful picture of what the church is all about. I don't have much time. I could talk about this literally for hours. I love the local church. I love the global church. And I love just hearing some of the stories there, the impact that the local church has had on our nation and on the nations. But there are a lot of misconceptions when we think about what church is. For starters, it's not a building. Did you know for the first four centuries of the church in its history that there were no fancy buildings like this one? Most likely, if you were part of the church, you were part of a small group that would have met in your house and you would have had family there, friends there, and some of the people that you were seeking to share the gospel with. Nor is it one to two hours on a Sunday 
morning like this. Although I love gathering in the bowling club here to worship with you guys, church is more than this, and it's certainly more than the Alpha course as well. It's more than a program like Alpha. To understand what the local church is, we need to understand what church means in its local context. So the word in the New Testament used to describe the church is this one that you see on the screen. It's ecclesia. Can everyone here say ecclesia with me? Ecclesia. You can do better than that. Ecclesia. ecclesia. That's better, that's better. So the word used was ecclesia, and it literally means the called out ones. It was a gathering of people. It means an assembly of people, people who are Christians. And it makes sense because God has called us out of darkness into Jesus' kingdom of life. And we've been called out of the world, but we've also been called for a special purpose within the world. We aren't for one minute sucked out of the world. And the passage we read this morning captures this idea well. This idea of being a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. So that we can bring glory to God on earth and live well in a fallen world. And so the church refers to the local called out ones here, right here in Tully Carnot. But as well, when we think of church, it refers to the local church in this city of Belfast. But as well as that, it refers to the whole community of Christians worshiping right now across the globe. And as well, the whole community of Christians who have lived and died before us. I've got a picture here of Amy Carmichael, a local missionary who had an amazing impact on the, uh, the people of India. How does that feel this morning? That you are a chosen people. You are a called out kind of people. That you are that special and that loved by God. Maybe you didn't realize this morning that you were part of something so Big. I think in Northern Ireland we can sort of get caught up in this idea that we're part of a local church that's maybe small. But actually when you gather for worship, you're joining with people from across the whole planet. So I want to make a few points this morning as to what the local church is and should be. I could go on and on and on and on for hours, uh, but I don't have time this morning. But the first thing I want to point out, and it was said in the interview, is that we are family. We are family and you belong here before you believe or you behave. Something that I love about the church is it is a gathering of people <coughs> unlike any other. It's not a social club. It's often full of people who are totally unlike us. And what unites us is that we are family. Church is home. So in the Old Testament, it was the temple in Jerusalem that was the focus of God's presence here on earth. And in the New Testament, it's not a physical building. It's a building made up of people, as our passage this morning was saying. Sometimes people walk into our church and they say, wow, there's an amazing atmosphere in this place. What are they sensing? Well, they're sensing the Holy Spirit. They're sensing Jesus. They're sensing lives changing in this place. They're sensing the presence of God in this place. And I think that is amazing. And church is, in a sense, God's home. And it's our home. We belong as a family. And you don't get to choose your family. And you certainly don't give up on your family when they let you down. And it's a family, and I'm speaking mostly actually to the Alpha guys now, it's a family where you belong before you believe or you behave. It's a family where everyone is welcome and we must make it a welcoming place. Yes, we teach distinctive and sometimes challenging things from the Bible, but this is always going to be a place of welcome. 
John Wimber, a famous pastor, uh, once said that people come to church for a variety of reasons. So they might say, oh, we're coming to hear Matthew Gold. He is a brilliant preacher. <laughs> or we're coming to hear Ali leading worship. Her worship is incredible. Or we're coming to hear Tiago playing the bells. Yes. <laughs> yeah. People come to church for a variety of reasons. But they only stay for one reason, and that is friendship. If there isn't love, if your church is welcoming, if your church has assigned seats, people aren't coming to church. It's got to be welcoming. And we've got to make this place a place of welcome. So if you're new to church, I just want to say welcome home to you. For our regulars, how in ways unique to you can we make this the best place to be in East Belfast every Sunday morning? How can we make this the best place for people to come all week? How can we do this? I want you to think about that this week. So church is a family, but church is also a commitment. It's a place where we commit to grow together. The head of the church is not a pope or an archbishop of Canterbury, or a lead pastor like me. Whatever title you want to put on it, the head of the church is not those things. As Ephesians 4 tells us, it is Jesus who is the head of the church, although leaders are incredibly important. And unity within the church is hugely important among other denominations and within the local church. On Friday, for instance, I was uh, in a meeting with some other local church leaders who want to make a difference in East Belfast. We met together to discuss how we can bring the light of God's kingdom into our local community. What people often don't realize is that when you become a Christian, it's not about just our individual faith. We can't live out our faith alone, as some of the guys were saying at the front. Being a Christian isn't about being a lone ranger. We need other believers to speak into our lives. We need others to encourage us and challenge us. And we also need a space where we can serve and uh, use our gifts. And we also need the gifts of other people ministering into our lives to help us in our time of need. And we also need to be a help to others in theirs. Our passage today spoke of the church as a people. A people, plural. It's not just about you or me and our individual experience. It's about us working together. And being in regular worship is integral to our growth as Christians. As Hebrews 10, 25 says, you know that we're not to give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but we're to encourage one another. I would encourage everyone to be in worship at least once a week. So being here on a Sunday, I believe it's vitally important, but I also think that the weekly small group is also really important. Our small group has recently stopped for Christmas, uh, but we meet each week uh, for encouragement to, to read the scriptures together and to pray with each other. And there's laughter and there's food and it's wonderful. Maybe you're finding yourself at the end of the Alpha course and you're sort of at a loss of what to do. Uh, maybe your response is to join one of our small groups in the new year. People often say to me, I love Jesus, but I hate the church. I have to say this morning, that does not work as a Christian. Because as I said before, being a Christian is about having an individual, personal relationship with Jesus, but it is also about being part of a community. It's about being part of a community of other Christians. I want you to imagine for a second going to coffee with me this week. So I take you out for coffee, we're having great laughs, great discussion, it's wonderful, and then I start insulting your husband, or your wife, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend. How in that moment would you feel? You probably want to punch me, right? Maybe. 
Likewise, if anyone starts insulting Kirsty, <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> Another image of the church in the Bible, later in Ephesians and in Romans, or sorry, in Revelation, the church is described as the bride of Christ. Jesus loves his church in a way that a husband ought to love his wife. And I don't think as church or as Christians that we're called to insult the bride of Christ, to talk down about it. And I think a lot of people say, yes, I want Jesus, but I don't want the church. It's kind of like saying his bride is ugly. If you think about it that way, the church might not be perfect right now. It might not seem like you are to you like a beautiful bride. For me, I've seen the church at its most beautiful, but I've also seen the church at its most ugly. And that's because the church is full of sinful people like me and like you. But Jesus loves his bride. He loves the church. And in the same way, he doesn't give up on us. He doesn't give up on this idea of the church either. In Revelation 21 2, there is this beautiful picture of what the church will be like when Jesus comes again and puts this messy world right. In Revelation, it describes how the church will be a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. A bride beautifully dressed for her husband. So maybe your response today is to commit to being part of the local church. Maybe it's to resolve to be part of a small group. Or maybe this is challenging you on maybe some attitudes around the local church. Maybe the Lord is challenging you again to see the beauty in the local church again. One of the marks, particularly in Protestant churches, and I believe that this is something that the Protestant church has got pretty right in its theology, is the idea of the priesthood of all believers. To quote John Wimber again, it's that idea that everyone in church gets to play. Sometimes we picture church like a game of tennis. So we're at Wimbledon and we're watching the tennis and it's like the priest or the rector or the pastor or the minister is like the tennis player out on the grass, serving, playing, sweating, trying really, really hard. And then we as the church are sitting out in the audience, eating strawberries, having a good time. This is not God's vision for the church. We are not called in the church to be spectators. We're not called to come to church each week with a scorecard saying how much we enjoy the worship or how much we enjoy the pastor and his talk or how much we enjoyed the people that we're worshiping with. Church is not a spectator sport. Church is more like this sport. It is more like being part of a rugby team. I love rugby, by the way. Uh, and in rugby, all 15 players on the field work together. All 15 players on the field matter. They tackle together. They get hurt together, they get muddy together, and they move forward together as a unit. Everyone is working hard on the pitch. It's not just about the pastor or the minister. If it's about me or it's about the pastor, then there's a problem. If the pastor is the only person in the church visiting the sick, there's a problem. Everyone in the church has to pull together. In 1 Corinthians chapters 12 to 13, Paul describes the church like a body, the body of Christ. And what does a body have? Loads of different and really important parts. There is a plurality and there is a unity in that body. In 1 Corinthians, it describes how we have different spiritual gifts different spiritual gifts that build up the church. So we all, I'm looking out at the church here, you all have a role to play. In the same way, in rugby, 
there's a fly half, they do a lot of the kicking, there's wingers and they're really great at scoring tries. So too in the church, there will be people who are really great at leading worship or coming up to the front and doing a talk or praying with people or being hospitable. But we all have to find our place and we all find fulfillment in the development of the whole. There's also a plurality in terms of ethnicity and social origins. But we are united together. It doesn't matter whether you're rich, middle class, or working class. It doesn't matter if you're from the countryside, like Kirsty, or you're from the city. Uh, it doesn't matter what country that you're from. I love that we have different countries represented here this morning. I love that we have people who are from the Philippines. I love that we have people from Portugal who are with us this morning. And we all depend on each other. What is your role? And how has God gifted you? Maybe you're new to church, or maybe you're new in the life of this church. There are so many rules for you in this place, so many ways that you can serve. And if you're looking for a place to serve, do approach us. We would love to get you involved. And as well, there are numerous opportunities in mission, whether it's door to door, meeting people in the streets, praying with them, whether it's serving people practically, there are so many opportunities. And finally, we gather to scatter. We gather to scatter. I think it's really important to remember at the end of a Sunday service, although the worship has ended, although the Bible teaching has ended, the nice tea and coffee at the back has ended, the service hasn't ended for the week. Actually, the service has only just begun. We gather as Christians so that we can scatter into the world and make a difference, so that we can serve other people. In the Church of Ireland, uh, we're not terribly Church of ireland -y here. We're, we're quite uh, modern and contemporary. Uh, but normally at the end of a Church of Ireland service, the rector says to the congregation, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And then the congregation will reply together, in the name of Christ, amen. It's an important reminder that we gather in church to be inspired and encouraged as Christians so that we can scatter into the world and make a difference and share our faith with other people. A few weeks ago in this place, we were talking about being salt and light. How we can make a difference in our world. How this week are you gonna be a light to those that you work with, your relatives, your colleagues, your neighbours, your friends, your fellow students, how are you going to make a difference this week? Who can you share the message of Jesus with or share your story with this week? So as we come in for a landing this week, I have a few responses that you may want to make uh, this week. We should come up on the screen. And the first response here is to join in. Maybe you aren't a regular attender of church, maybe you're not here every week. Maybe you're not a regular attendee of small group, but you want to be involved. Maybe this week it's to join in, to commit to being a regular part of our church on Sunday, or to sign up for a home group for regular, ongoing support, encouragement, and to be challenged. Our home groups will be relaunching in the new year. Uh, we are really looking forward to that. So if you want to be part of that, please, please, please do sign up. The second maybe is to serve. Maybe your response is to begin serving in the local church. Maybe your response is to begin to get involved in any practical jobs that happen here on a Sunday. But as I said, church is way more than what happens here on a Sunday. We have teams that go door to door in our community and meet local people. They go and pray with people. We have teams that do uh, work with prison fellowship and we help them out. We have teams that meet with people practically each week and give them the support and encouragement that they need. We have teams of people who lead alpha courses in this place. How can you make a difference and serve on mission? Maybe your response is actually to repent for bad attitudes towards the bride of Christ. I'm a pastor. And sometimes I can have bad attitudes about the bride of Christ. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I have to repent. 
because it's his bride who he loves. Maybe your response is to repent. Or finally, maybe your response is actually to receive prayer for some of the negative experiences that you have faced in church. Maybe some bad things have happened to you in church. And I just want to say sorry to you this morning for those bad experiences that you've maybe had, where people maybe haven't treated you well. So if that's the case, every week at the end of church, we have a team of people here uh, who would love uh, to pray with you uh, for any physical, emotional, or spiritual needs. So if you want prayer, there'll be a team of us here, and you can come forward, and we would love uh, to pray with you. So Ali is going to come forward now.